If I want to graph this function, cosine of negative pi x plus pi over 4, first thing I want to do is factor out that negative pi. Now, even if you're not in the habit of factoring out the coefficient in front of x, which I highly recommend, if there's a negative, you definitely want to factor that out. Because right now, that negative sign does not apply to the entire input. It only applies to the first term. So I'm going to say this is cosine of negative pi times the quantity x minus 1 fourth. Quick check, if I distribute that negative pi, negative pi times negative 1 fourth would give me back the pi over 4. And of course, negative pi times x gives me back the negative pi x. But now, that negative sign applies to the entire input to cosine. The input is the opposite of pi times x minus pi over 4. But cosine is even. Opposite input gives me the same output. So I don't have to deal with that negative sign. Really nice. If this were a sign, I would deal with the negative sign by saying opposite input gives me the opposite output, and I would move the negative to the front. But with cosine, it just goes away. That's lovely. OK. So now I want to uh, graph this. I can see all of the stuff I'm doing, I'm doing before I plug into cosine. So it's going to be giving me horizontal transformations. So I'm going to use that trick that cosine does its thing once as the input varies from 0 to 2 pi. But that's my input, pi times x minus 1 fourth. Okay. So now, to solve for x, I'm going to divide through by pi. So we'll get 0 less than or equal to x minus 1 fourth, less than or equal to 2. Let me just point out here, if you had not dealt with that negative sign so that you had a negative pi that you were dividing by, that would reverse the inequalities, so that when you're graphing things, your starting point would be to the right of your ending point. You'd have to be sort of graphing things backwards. That's way more confusing than we need to get. Deal with the negative sign first. Okay, so now I'm going to add one-fourth to each piece. So one-fourth less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 would be eight-fourths plus one-fourth is nine-fourths. Okay, so let's write down what our new period is. So I know that should be the original period of 2 pi divided by the absolute value of whatever I'm multiplying by x. So it doesn't matter whether I look here and take the negative pi, or look here and take the negative pi, or look here and take the pi, because they all have the same absolute value. The absolute value is pi, so the period should be 2. Let's do a quick check. Ending point of 9 fourths minus starting point of 1 fourth is 8 fourths, which is 2. That checks. So two ways to calculate the period, and they agree. I'm feeling confident. Excellent. So if the period is 2, the increment is always just a quarter of that, because that's the distance between my important points. And I've got a qu an important point, a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and all the way through. So that's going to be 2 divided by 4, which reduces to 1 half, which means the x values that are going to be important to me. Okay, I'm starting at 1 fourth. That was my starting point. And now I'm just going to add 1 fourth to, 1 half to that. Kind of useful that I've recorded that that's the same as 2 fourths. So 1 fourth plus 2 fourths would be 3 fourths, plus another 2 fourths would be 5 fourths, plus another 2 fourths would be 7 fourths, plus another 2 fourths would be 9 fourths. I added my increment 1, 2, 3, 4 times, and I got my ending point. Feeling good. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. Now, I'm starting at 1 fourth. As soon as I mark that off, I have indicated that that distance is 1 fourth. Let me show you a common mistake I see. People then say that's 3 fourths. Then you're telling me that this distance is the same as this distance. But it shouldn't be, because the increment was supposed to be 
two-fourths a. So if I'm saying that distance is one-fourth, I'm going to say, okay, so that's another two-fourths would be twice as long. That'll take me to three-fourths, which is my next important point. Four-fourths, five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths, eight-fourths, nine-fourths. Those were my important points, okay? All right. Then the high value is 1, the low value is negative 1, and this was a cosine graph, I've erased that, but cosine starts high, so at 1 fourth we're at a high value, at our next important point we're at a 0, at 5 fourths we'll be down at negative 1, at 7 fourths we'll be back at 0, and at 9 fourths we'll be up at 1. So I can play connect the dots. And if I extend this far enough that I cross the x-axis, I want to recognize that my next important point would be 2 fourths to the left of here. So I'm not going to hit 0 again until I'm at an x value of negative a fourth. So if I'm crossing the x-axis, or the y-axis rather, it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. I'm not concerned that you have it exact, but don't draw it so that you've got an x-intercept here, because we don't. And so that's why I'm going to be very careful about the scale that I'm using along the x-axis. I'm going to have you folks try one. So we're going to end this video now, but let me put up the problem on the board. Try to work it out before you tune into the next video, and we'll go over it then. So let's try y is equal to sine of negative 2x plus pi over 3. Okay. So see if you can graph that. Just a word of caution, you've got a negative here. Remember, sine is odd. So with sine, opposite input leads to opposite output. Okay? So try and graph that. We'll go over it together in the next video.